Dear Diary, after a glorious win on mine and Banco's part, we had the strangest encounter with three witches so garish and repulsive in nature that I doubted their ability to even speak. Alas, the words they spoke still resound in my head. The prophecy they uttered with firm conviction, nor pause in speech. At the time, it rendered me puzzled. In fact, I had made the quick assumption that they were mad. They spoke of me superseding the footing of the Thane of Cordor and acquiring the throne. Yet how could any of that be true? With the Thane of Cordor still flourishing in his rule and the crown so far reached for me. But lo and behold, the Thane of Cordor is now dead. I am now Thane of Cordor. The first part of the prophecy has been fulfilled. You simply cannot fault me for wondering if indeed this prophecy is true, what else the future must hold for me. So now the devilish chanting in whispers they mumble to each other ring in my brain. And as Duncan's horse gallops towards my castle, I cannot help but wonder. As such, I have decided to warn my wife regarding this pre decament She always knows what's best. Maybe I'll write her a letter to give her a hint. It will be too late by the time I come back. The thoughts in my head don't seem to want to piece together anymore. My thoughts are like shards of glass that prick at my conscience. Obviously, I know which path will get me the crown the quickest. Obviously, I know what needs to be done in order to get there. Yet, the mere thought of me committing the act itself fills me with a nagging dread that forces me to ponder the motives and consequences of that action. When Duncan first revealed that he had the intent of making Malcolm his heir, I was infuriated, my mind set on the image of that crown resting upon my head through deeds done in the dark. But now, I almost wish the stars I once had wanted gone to reveal to me exactly what I desire. For Duncan is a great, righteous, and sinless king. His each kind action definitely does not go unnoticed by the heavens above. Because of that I worry. After all, is power on earth worth the eternal damnation I will face after? However, Lady Macbeth's words pierce my reverie and pounds against my skull relentlessly. She says my intentions are not straight. She accuses me of not being a man of my word. She threatens that if it were her, she would have done the deed without blinking an eye. She questions even my love for her. She attacks my manhood. And I myself know I am most definitely a man, a man greater than any other man. If I were to go through with our ingenious plan, I would do so most valiantly. I would gain more power, more respect. I need to do this to maintain my preeminence. What more with the support of my wife? But if I were not to go with the plan? Truly, I can't seem to make up my mind regarding this issue. The world around me has long fell into the subliminality of sleep under the spell of the moon. But I was immune to this, not by choice, and not any more did I appreciate it. I squeezed my eyes shut for a moment, only to still see the wandering wisps of a pointed edge stitching itself together. I shook my head violently once more, only to hear the whispers of the advice my wife had given along my own conscious resounding within my skull, each time colliding into each other creating chips and cracks. Are you a man? If you don't do this, you'll be nothing. A voice hissed at me. Opening my eyes once more, I see it now before me as solid as in the light of day its handle unwavering, its direction fixed, the pressure of the handle against my trembling hand guiding me towards the inevitable. I knew that I might be simply hallucinating. I knew that before the trickles of red blood seemed to slither down my dagger. And then I strode forward, eyes now reamed open. I saw them once more. They had the same sinister smiles plastered across their faces now cheering, breaking the silence of the night. 
I saw him following me. His anemic feet were only smoke and ash before my eyes, moving in an almost ghostly fashion. I too made sure that my strides were silent and made sure to make haste. The deed in my mind is already done, for while I threat he lives.